So command blocks, well, what do they do? They have commands. Let me just quickly set the game rule to command block output false so I don't spam our chat. And the command block and comparator function is that a comparator will produce signal strength based on how many times the command inside of the command block succeeded. Now, most times, this can only be once. If I were to input slash time set day, and I were to input that, the command succeeded once. The time was set to day once, that was our command. However, uh, command blocks that can detect a player in the area, like, I don't know, for detect or whatever, if, or whatever if there's a player in a certain range if that is the case like a command block can detect something more than one time like a repeating command block every time it detects that the comparator will have another level of signal strength I hope that makes sense it's I know it's confusing you don't have to understand comparator command blocks that is not the point on my name is Weefies and welcome back so today we have a heavily requested feature of the redstone guidebook redstone rulebook whatever it is the tutorial on the comparator today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the comparator the basics and some of the logistics and how it overall works so yeah we're gonna be starting off with the basics so the comparator has two modes and the name is key there's compare mode and subtraction mode and I guess Subtraction mode and compare mode could mean the same thing to you guys. They don't worry about the names too much, but the subtract mode is usually where people get confused. So we're going to review that in a sec, but first some things you got to know about the comparator. The comparator in its basic mode has a basic function. It will look and see if there is a container that is containing anything. So uh, comparators, let's say I, was, I have a chest right here. If I were to place this chest in front of the comparator, uh, there's nothing in this chest, so that's why the comparator is not giving me an output. However, if I were to put an item in this chest, you can see there's an output. And later on in this episode, I will tell you how to calculate how much signal strength certain items will give you in certain containers. All the containers that can have an output are cauldrons, hoppers, blast furnaces, smokers, lecterns, and portal frames, shulker boxes, furnaces, dispensers, droppers, juke boxes item frames, end portal frames, composters, command blocks, cakes, hoppers, I already have hoppers, sorry, brewing stand, trap chest, obviously chests, barrels, and minecart chest and hopper chest if they're on a detector rail, otherwise it won't work. Uh, another interesting property of the comparator is that it can also take outputs through blocks. So even though it's not directly touching the chest, it can still take the output through this block. And this is something to be cautious of, because even though there's nothing in this chest, if this block is powered, the comparator will take the signal strength from that block. So that's just something to be worried about. So do not power the block unless you know you're intending that to be the thing. So another thing to note is the comparator gives one tick of delay. It can be used as a repeater if you want, but it's more expensive of a crafting recipe. I don't know why you would use it, but if you are working on some very strict timing, no, the comparator has one delay has one tick, redstone tick of delay. I might cover ticks in another video, but it has one redstone tick of delay. So you can see. We already know a repeater at its basic form has one tick of delay, and if I flick this lever, both pistons rise at exactly the same time. You can see if this were just a redstone dust, uh, the piston on the right would rise a tiny bit faster, or point one of a one tenth of a second faster. Uh, however, because comparators do give that one tick of redstone delay, they do rise and fall at the same time. So, bloop, blap. Uh, some more interesting logistics of the comparator is these three blocks, which a lot of people actually don't know about. I'll start with the ender chest. Comparators cannot take an output out of an ender chest. Another thing people don't know is that comparators can actually take outputs of juke boxes. Uh, each disc has a different signal strength. This is the order from least signal strength to most. So, 13 would give you a signal strength of 1, and weight would give you a signal strength of 12 and that's the maximum number you can get from a jukebox so that's kind of interesting I don't know why you'd use this function but it's pretty cool and a lot of people don't actually know about the command block function of a comparator which is similar to nothing else in the game there's a simple formula to calculate how many items will produce how much signal strength well I say simple but it's really not that simple here's the formula and it's in this book and quill 
Uh, it's 14 times the sum of fullness divided by the number of slots in the container plus one rounded down. So right away that seems like a lot and fullness is the number of items divided by the max stack size. So if I were to have, uh, let me, let's me let say we had a dispenser with 17 items in it. How much signal strength would that give us? Well, let's say these 17 items were split into uh, 16 uh, bookshelves and one diamond sword. Well, let's calculate the fullness for the diamond sword. The diamond sword is one item, and the max stack size is one, so that's one. The 16 bookshelves have a, how are there 16 of them, and the max stack size is 64. 16 divided by 64 is one fourth, and so one plus one fourth is our sum of fullness. Uh, 14 times one and one fourth is equal to about 70 fourths, well actually exactly 70 fourths, and the number of slots in our dispenser is 9, so 70 fourths divided by 9 is 70 36, which rounds down to 1, but then plus 1 is 2. So in theory, if we were to get a dispenser and get 16 bookshelves, and I, I mean 60, 60, 16 bookshelves and one diamond sword. In theory, we should have a signal strength of uh, two. So let's just try that and plug that in. If we have our dispenser and diamond sword, you can see it does have an output one, two, and that is the max. So as you can see, the formula does in fact work. You don't have to memorize it, and here are some useful numbers just to be clear. So most times you're gonna be using a chest when in subtract mode. And he, or a, a chest for looking at output period and it's not actually subtract mode yet so if you want a signal strength of 15 you're gonna need 27 non stackable items I use diamond swords but you don't have to uh, so a full chest if you want a signal strength of 14 you're gonna need 26 non stackable items I'm gonna say items but they have to be non stackable 13 is 25 12 is 23 11 is 21 10 is 19, and it just keeps going down by 2 for each signal strength increment after our original uh, 26 to 25. Then it just goes down by 2s. So a quick way to test this with any sort of container, I have it right now with chests, but let's say I were to grab in a hopper, and you really don't want to use the formula because you really hate math. So let's say I wanted to test how much signal strength one diamond sword would get me. Well, this is a very simple contraption. All I have is redstone dust, and some repeaters with lamps with numbers. So one dime, one non-stackable item in a comparator is a signal strength of three. One non, two non-stackable items is a signal strength of six. And you can keep going, and this is how you test any container. However, this is really useful if you're gonna use chests. So now we're gonna actually move on to subtract mode. Subtract mode is very basic, and while other people say it's confusing, it's really not, and it's really easy to understand. So subtract mode is pretty much you're comparing, a comparator. So here's your main input, and here's your subtractor input. And I touched upon this briefly in my first episode of the Redstone Guide, but the output of a comparator in subtract mode will pretty much be main minus side. So let's say I have a lever with a signal, this Redstone dust has a signal strength of 15. And if I were to put one lever right here, this Redstone dust, has a signal strength of 14, 15, 14. So now let's take our comparator. Well, originally, if it wasn't in subtract mode, it would just take the biggest output or the main output and give a signal strength of 15. However, if we toggle it into subtract mode, the signal strength becomes one because 15 minus 14 equals one. I touched upon this again, as I said in my previous, in my first video, but if you do this, uh, 15, 14 minus 15 is negative, and you cannot have a negative output, so this is just going to be zero. So that's something to note. Uh, anything, it doesn't have to be redstone dust that goes into the side of a comparator. It can be repeaters, redstone torches, redstone blocks, a comparator into a comparator. And this is actually extremely useful for item frame combination locks. Before we end the video, I'm going to give you guys a challenge. Using what you already know, using all of this that I've shown you, and I'll go back to the shulker box. 
uh, I want you to give me a combination lock that only turns on a lamp when the arrow is at 6. Uh, and I've labeled this, so an arrow in this position will give a signal strength of 1, here I'll give a signal strength of 2, 3, 4, etc. Good luck, and yeah, let's move into the explanation. Okay, I hope you paused the video and tried to build it. If you didn't, no problemo. Here is my solution. I didn't go for compactness, I went for understanding. So let's just try it. Right now, that's our redstone output lamp. If I turn it to everything, six, it turns on. Every other position, it just will not work. And you're gonna need to think a little bit for this redstone contraption. I'm sorry, I know you don't like thinking, but you're gonna have to do it. So what do we have in the back right here? Well, we know our comparator at position strength six gives an output of six. So we need something that will provide an output of one, and I'll explain why in a second. So six minus what is one? Uh, let me switch it to position six just for understanding. So we want a single strength of one. Six minus one summit minus what is one? And I grabbed the five. This is our five chest. It has nine to non-stackable items. So this gives an output of five, and this gives an output of six, and so we have a signal strength of one when the comparator is when the arrow is at position six. Thus, this piston is extended. Uh, right here we have a little constant circuit. This is our logic circuit. So I uh, don't worry, that name doesn't mean anything. So right here we have a lever into a repeater. This will never be toggled. This is just always on. We can replace it with a redstone block if, or a redstone torch. And when the signal strength is at one, this piston extends. Let's say this piston was retracted. Let's say our arrow is at position four. Four minus five will not give us a redstone output. So you can see, let's put it to position four. Uh, I believe this is four. This is four. Uh, you see there is no output, thus this piston is retracted, thus this repeater cannot travel its circuit. But what if the output is bigger? Well, let's try position 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. However, if it does reach the second slot, this piston extends as well. And now this repeater can't travel through this block. So exactly at 6, there is no leaking over of the redstone dust. It's just enough so that this piston can be powered, but it's not enough to power this piston so the block gets out of the way. And then our output can travel safely to the redstone lamp, and that is the basics of a combination lock in Minecraft. Now, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you did learn something, consider leaving a like. If you have any questions, I hope that it will be answered in the comments section. I'll be looking around at early questions, so yeah, but if I'm not there, hopefully someone in the comments can answer your question. And if you guys are pretty knowledgeable at the subject, then maybe consider answering other people's questions. It would really mean a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, then be sure to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.